Welcome to Style Masterclass, the podcast that teaches women to look stylish and feel confident so that they can show up ready to conquer and slay no matter what size they are. I'm your host, Miss J. You ready? Hello, welcome back to the Style Masterclass podcast. I'm your host, Judith Gatton. This week, we are talking about the two kinds of courage. I'm going to talk about the first one that you're going to be super familiar with, particularly my lady bosses. And then I'm going to talk to you about the other kind of courage and how we can use that as a skill to style ourselves, to craft our own personal style, our signature style, and make it more in line with our own identity. So let's dive in. The first kind of courage, which I call the courage in the middle. So many of my clients have honed the courage in the middle. Here's what I mean by that. The courage to do the hard thing. My clients are lady bosses, entrepreneurs. They have higher degrees in various forms or fashions in their professions. They have honed their skills and their careers. They are lady bosses. They are smart cookies. They are tough cookies. They're used to having hard conversations. They're used to leading teams of people. They are used to running the thing. And they are so used to having courage in the middle of a circumstance that feels hard. They're used to doing the hard thing. They're used to talking themselves into doing the hard thing. White knuckling, grinning and bearing, sucking it up buttercup. These ladies are courageous in the middle of circumstances that are not for the faint of heart. And I commend them and I applaud them and I'm in awe of them. If we translate this into style and fashion, oftentimes they do that courage in the middle thing when it comes to dressing themselves. They're physically uncomfortable, but they grin and bear it. They're emotionally uncomfortable because what they're wearing is just incongruent with how they see themselves, their own personal style, the signature style that they so desperately want to develop and that we work on in my program. We help you define your signature style, but so many of my clients come to me and they're like, I don't even know where to start with the style stuff. I don't even know what my style is. And they're used to using that courage in the middle of a tough situation as a skill they've honed and practiced. They put up with a lot of physical discomfort. Their shoes, too tight clothes, things that are feeling lopsided that they have to mess with all day. They're used to grinning and bearing and sucking it up buttercup and exercising that in the middle courage. And then there's the emotional courage that I don't really want to be wearing this, but I think I have to because that's what professional quote unquote women do. I'm going to dress so outside of my own comfort zone, but I'm going to suck it up buttercup because that's what professional women do. And it feels out of integrity and it just feels awful, but they're used to practicing courage in the middle. So they grin and bear it. What I want to invite you into is the other kind of courage. The one that even I am not so great at practicing all the time that I have to remind myself to practice. And that's courage before the fact. Here's what I mean by that. Courage that says no before a thing even occurs. This is particularly true for my smart, tough cookies who have the courage in the middle skill down pat. But the courage beforehand is where things could use some honing, some crafting, some practice. The courage to say, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to go to that event. No, I don't want to wear that. No, this doesn't feel like me. No, that's physically uncomfortable. No, that's emotionally unbearable. It's so incongruent with who I am and how I want to show up in the world. I don't want to wear the thing or do the thing. No. Unequivocating, without justification, without excuse. No. Or halfway through an event, instead of continuing to exercise courage in the middle, to exercise the other kind of courage and say, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to go now. I've had my fill. Mission accomplished. Time to go. No. Now, how does this relate to style? 
Specifically, I want you to start practicing the skill of saying no to number one, fashion trends that are not for you, that you're not enticed by, that you're not excited by, that you have no desire to try, but you've been telling yourself that's what professional women do. You know what professional, smart, tough cookie, badass women do? They say no to fashion trends that are not in alignment with their lifestyle or their personal style. Number two, I want you to start to exercise that no, that courage before an event by saying no to anything, and I really mean this, anything style-wise that doesn't fit your body's physical needs. So many of my clients have actual physical diagnoses, particularly with regard to their feet. I notice this a lot. I have some clients who've had diastasis, and I don't want to say it incorrectly, but they have a tummy issue. And a lot of times they've had children and their tummy just didn't go back to the way they thought it would. So they have little protruding bellies, beautiful rotundity in their bellies. But they squish themselves into sausage casings, and it's actually really bad for an existing condition. They squish themselves into shoes that don't fit, which is really bad for an existing condition. We're going to say no to fashion trends, but we're also going to say no to anything that's going to cause you physical harm because you have an actual diagnosis. We don't have to grin and bear that, my friends. We're going to exercise the other kind of courage and say no beforehand. And third, and I really mean this lovingly, you're going to have some well-meaning people in your life who have some style advice for you. That you should straighten your hair because it's more professional. That you should wear a suit because it's more professional. They're going to have ideas about what is, quote unquote, professional. And I want you to start to exercise that courage beforehand that says, no, that's not what professional looks like for me. And deciding for yourself what it looks like for you. So that when people with their opinions and they'll have opinions, when they come to you, we're not going to grin and bear it in an outfit that we hate. We're going to exercise that other kind of courage that simply says no. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to start to practice the courage beforehand. No to fashion trends, no to anything that's physically going to mess with the diagnosis you already have, and no to those well-meaning people who want to define for you what it means to be professional or stylish. Now, if you're wondering, what's this? You help us with signature style stuff? Yes. We totally help you in my Style Masterclass program. It's my eight-week style coaching program where we style you. Yes, we have personal stylist services. We shop for you and we coach you on confidence, on body image, on learning to dress and love the body you are in. And we teach you how to create an endless amount of outfits that fit your personally defined, personally unique signature style. It's different for every woman, and it's a delight to find out what yours is. If you're interested on getting in on this goodness, go to judasgatan.com forward slash style dash school, or you can go to judasgatan.com and click on the work with me button to find out more. Until next time, lovies, Miss J out. Thank you for listening to today's episode. To learn more about how to work with me, go to judasgatan.com. Click on the Start Here button to get access to my free personal style class. I give you a quick style win, a confidence boost, and you walk away with the tools to start getting stylish. Who doesn't love that? See you there. Miss J out.